Hi, and welcome to the MyConsultant.ca show. I'm Sarah Ostapchuk. And I'm Adrian Quijano. And we're here to help you with the Canadian immigration process. This show is designed to be a brief way to inform you on Canadian immigration news headlines, immigration policy and program concepts, and introduce you to industry experts. Today's show will include more Ukrainian settlement aid, 10,000 Afghan refugees welcomed, community spotlight on Prince Albert, Saskatchewan, and open work permits for Ukrainians. Canada has increased settlement aid for newly arriving Ukrainians. On March 30th, 2022, Minister Sean Fraser announced that settlement services are going to be available for temporary Ukrainian residents. Now, this is an exception, actually, because settlement services are supposed to only be available to permanent residents in Canada. Uh, and this exception is going to last until March 31st, 2023, under the CUAET. And that is the temporary pathway that the Canadian government have started developing a couple of weeks ago. For those who don't know, settlement services include language training, Canadian orientation, such as school enrollment, mentoring, counseling, and skills development for work, community immersion, and targeted services for vulnerable people, such as seniors, women, and people of the LGBTQ community. And there are 550 agencies like this across Canada. Also, what has been created is the Ukraine Cross-Sectoral Collaboration Governance Table, which is a lot of words, and that includes several different groups of people, such as settlement sector leaders, provincial representatives, the Ukrainian Canadian Congress, and the Red Cross, as well as, well as other stakeholders and uh, federal partners. So they will basically handle the Ukraine response on Canadian soil, what we will be doing here for Ukrainians coming in, such as uh, volunteers and donations. In other news, Canada has recently marked its arrival of 10,000 Afghan refugees. The Honourable Sean Fraser, who is the Minister of Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship for Canada, came to Toronto to welcome the newcomers and show our country's dedication to supporting them. The Government of Canada, as well as its international partners, have continued the effort to accelerate the safe passage of Afghan refugees. Thankfully, the Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship of Canada Department, or the IRCC, has been working directly with social programs specifically to support refugees in all provinces and territories. The settlement program run by the IRCC works with its partners nonstop to help newcomers enroll in schools, establish a permanent home, and find jobs. I think it's really nice that the minister of IRCC and I think other ministers too are willing to go to airports and make personal connections and welcome immigrants who are coming into the country. Yeah, I agree. And then on a personal note, when my dad moved to Canada in the 90s, uh, his group of folks that came into the country were also welcomed by the Minister of Immigration then. Um, and I've heard that story since I was a kid, so it was pretty interesting to hear. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's really mm -hmm. cool. I Do you remember who the minister was back then? I'm sure your dad does. Yeah, yeah. I should ask him. But yeah, he was, he's a Filipino immigrant. Yeah. Um, and I think there was a high rise of uh, Filipino immigrants coming in from the 90s. So I think Canada wanted to show its support for mm -hmm. them coming here. Well, yeah, it, it clearly makes an impact if your father remembers that and tells you about it. And now you remember that. So yeah, right. It, it yeah. creates a lasting feeling of be belonging in Canada, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For this week's Community Spotlight, we'll be taking a look at the Indigenous communities from Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. Prince Albert, Saskatchewan is a hub of healthcare, retail, and education with over 195,000 people. Prince Albert is currently located on Treaty 6 territory and is homeland of many Indigenous groups. Prince Albert has one of the highest Indigenous population ratios in Canada. On June 16, 2020, the city of Prince Albert officially opened and blessed seven new interpretive signs along the river bank and rotary trails just east of the historical museum. These signs is installed as a part of the initiative for cultural action offered an introduction to the six Prince Albert and area indigenous groups, the Plains Cree, Woodland Cree, Swampy Cree, 
Dakota, Denny, and Métis. These interpretive signs will serve as an easily accessible and informal opportunity for residents and visitors to learn more about the Indigenous groups that call Prince Albert home. This project was informed and guided by the First Nations and Métis knowledge keepers from each of the Indigenous groups listed above. Ukrainian nationals coming in from Ukraine currently can now apply for an open work permit in Canada. An open work permit is a permit that allows you to work for almost any employer in Canada and lasts up to three years. The people that can apply for this include Ukrainian nationals and their families. How do you apply? This process is a little difficult, so we're going to take it step by step and go through all the different steps of how to apply for an open work permit in Canada. One, obtain a visitor's visa, such as the new CUAET, which is Canada-Ukraine Authorization for Emergency Travel. This new temporary pathway to come to Canada is a visitor's visa. So you can apply to this visitor's visa or another visitor's visa in order to obtain the work permit. When applying, you will be asked if you want to work while in Canada. Make sure you answer yes. This will allow you to obtain an open work permit. If you have already applied for the CUAET and did not choose the option to work, you can still apply for an open work permit once in Canada. Two, once you're in Canada, gather the necessary materials you will need to apply online. This includes a scanner or a camera, as well as access to the internet. Three, create an IRCC secure account online, then sign in. Once signed in, click on Start Your Application, then Apply to Come to Canada, scroll to I do not have a personal reference code, and click on Visitor Visa, Study and or Work Permit, then click on Work. Five, get your personalized document checklist. You will receive this after answering a few questions. These are the answers to the questions. You must select these answers in order to qualify for this work permit. What would you like to do in Canada? Answer, work. How long are you planning to stay in Canada? Answer, temporary more than six months. What is your current immigration status in Canada? Answer, worker. Even if you're a student, you still select worker. Does one of the following apply to you? Answer, yes. The option that applies to you is, I am applying for an open work permit under an active public policy or pilot program announced by IRCC. There are fees associated with this application. Will you be paying your fees or are you fee exempt? Answer, no, I am exempt from paying fees for the application. Six, once you have received your document checklist, read the instruction guide and fill out each application on your checklist. For the work permit application, there are specific answers that you must put in the different categories. For example, under type of work permit, put open work permit. Under job title, put Ukraine 2022, Ukraine spelt in all capital letters. Under brief description of duties, put Ukraine 2022 public policy dash open work permit. Under duration of expected employment, you may enter your desired start date, although it's not guaranteed, and end date. The end date can be up to three years from your start date. Seven, finally, upload your documents. Documents include a letter stating, I am exempt from paying fees under the Ukraine special measures. This will be your proof of fee exemption. A passport or travel document, a digital photo, and the family information form, which is known as IMM 5707. Follow these instructions very carefully to receive your open work permit when you come to Canada. Let's rejoin Adrian to wrap up the show. So Adrian, something interesting that I learned recently is that April 4th was Refugee Rights Day. And uh, that's a day kind of sponsored by the Canadian Council for Refugees, which is a nonprofit organization that advocates for the right to refuge. And they had a Zoom event and had some speakers. And uh, I just think it's a really interesting cause. And do you do you yourself know any refugees? I do. I have a friend of mine who I used to live with uh, who 
recently had gained refugee status. She was originally from Palestine and um, she's a good friend of mine. And when she came to Canada, she was able to not only get support, obviously from the Canadian government, but from the community that she has here in the city that we lived in together. Um, so yeah, a lot of folks banded together to help uh, buy her groceries and um, clothes for when she needed it. And GoFundMe was really helpful for her. And specifically our friend group, because I'm friends with a lot of international students as well. We were all able to give her some advice as to PR status, where to go, what the IRCC is, um, possibly even if you know she was able to access it, a uh, talking to an immigration consultant to help her through her process because she's quite young, so she needed mm -hmm. all the help that she could get. And it was it's nice to see that you know she's she's thriving now in a new city. And she has her own fashion company, which is really cool. <laughs> wow, good for yeah. her. <clears throat> yeah, I think um, you could probably speak to the fact that getting refugee status and that whole process is not easy. And definitely not, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, everyone who comes into the country as a refugee has different circumstances. Um, and I think what helped her the most was having uh, a community around her. Um, to provide her information that maybe she didn't know where to even find. I think that probably is just an example of why an organization like the Canadian Council for Refugees exists because Canada is a great country for this reason. We are lucky to live here in a country that is world renowned for the amount of refugees that we take in. But even that number is still quite small and there are lots of people who don't receive refugee status who truly do need it. Right. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for joining us this week. Be sure to click the bell icon and subscribe to the My Consultant channel. For more information about the topics covered in this show, please visit myconsultant.ca where you can contact an authorized immigration and citizenship consultant. I'm Adrian Quijano. And I'm Sarah Ostapchuk. And we'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>